I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like the video, and share it. Thanks. All right, so we have the beginnings of a Redux application, right? And we focus on just setting up the plumbing of going from one component, generating, disp dispatching an action, the action trigger being handled by a reducer, redu the reducer generating a new state, uh, storing that new state in the in the uh, a store, right? and then the store being provided to a, a, an application. Right? So we're doing we're doing that pipeline. Okay? Uh, so now let's go let's go. Uh, now we want to be able to render that new state somewhere. Right? We want to see it. Uh, be be uh, actually rendered in some elements. Right, so so what we're going to do is that we're going to kind of do the the uh, the uh, go the other way around. Right? We we'll, we want to we want to map somehow. We want to make the mapping between the the state that is being generated in the store. That we see, we see, so I want to map those, that state information to the React world. Right? And the, the way the React world receives any of uh, uh, data typically is through properties. Uh, that are passed in as argument of the components. Right? So there has to be some mapping between these two worlds. Right? And again, React uh, Redux is not specific to React. Right? So there, there's, there's some magic that needs to happen right, to map those two worlds. Right? The state that is being generated in a, in a, in a, by a reducer, somehow that needs to be mapped to, to, uh, to properties in components. Right? So let's do that. Uh, so first, uh, we'll need to go back to the component, so whatever component you're working in, and declaring a property, some property, uh, so that I can pass you data. Yeah, and, and presumably, you're going to render that data somehow. Okay? All right, so, so I'm going to grab that si some property, and I'm going to go back to my component. Here's my component, and that's the, it's some property. There it is. So some component property. I still have my dispatcher. Uh, and we're going to render it. Let's, let's render it maybe as an as an H1. Right, it's complaining because uh, components want to have just one single element. So just a so let's uh, let's make it happy. So there's our H, uh, our div. Uh, we have an, an, an a couple nested components. There we go. All right. So there's our uh, there's our component, and presumably somebody's going to pass it uh, the, the data, right, as in the properties, and we're just going to render it as an H1. Okay. Um, all right. So so let's let's uh, now if this were a, a normal React without Redux, uh, we would be uh, somehow having you know registering an event handler, you know this dot, you know set property uh, bind this yada yada yada, right? We'd be doing all that event handler instead. <coughs> Instead, we are ripping out that role. We're saying, no, component, you're no longer going to be responsible for maintaining your own state. Somebody else is going to do that. Right? And they're going to pass you the state for rendering. Right? That's going to make it much, much easier to, uh, to test uh, components. Makes it very, very, much, much easier to do that. Um, all right, so how do, we, how do we do this? So to do that, we're going to have to map we're going to have to map uh, uh, here. This is the state that the that the reducer is, is uh, generating. See that the reducer is generating that state and putting that into the store, right? And it's going to give it's going to give it it's give a particular name, some state attribute with some other state, right? Um, so maybe uh, maybe a new state or maybe a better name. Uh, so we want to grab that state. That's what we want to render, All right? So how do we do that? Uh, so we need a mapper, somebody who is going to look at the state in the in the uh, in the in the store. Somebody's going to look at the properties in the component and say, "Ah, this should go to that." Okay, right. So the uh, the connect that we looked at earlier is going to allow us to do that. Right. If you remember before, that connect function was uh, had a an empty argument list. Right. Had just connect. Open parentheses, close parentheses. Remember that, right? Well, one of the arguments that you can pass in is a mapper, right? A property mapper, right? A state to property mapper. Right? And here's the mapper that we're going to generate. It says, it says uh, the, the the property mapper is just going to be an object that says, this is what it's called in the component. This is what it's called in the store. <coughs> okay, that's all it is. What, what is it called in both worlds? 
Right? And then you pass it into the connect function, and the connection does the magic of, of mapping. Any changes in the state will trigger a change in the properties and a re-render in the DOM. All right, so let's do that. Let's, uh, let's create a sum state to property mapper. There it is. Uh, and we're going to add the mapper to the, to the connect as argument, some state pro to props, right? Okay. Uh, and that's it. Let's try it out. Uh, so if I press here, it goes in the alert and it doesn't work. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, did, I, did I get any errors? Let's see. I didn't get any errors. Something. Oh, I'm not running. Uh, so npm start. That would help. It's running. Still, um, source, source. Let's see. Uh, we can take a look at the source here. Uh, source index and um, let's see state mapper did I call it right some state mapper some components a reducer some container and the containers being rendered and the reducer some new attribute oh maybe I named it wrong yeah me not following my own all right so let's call it the right thing right so uh, some state property, prop mapper, blah, blah, blah. I called it some new attribute. I think that's what I called it, some new attribute. Some new attribute. There we go. Let's see? There we go. It worked. All right, so I, I, I used the wrong names because I wasn't copying and pasting. Yes? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, you mean like a, a default mapping between the names? Yeah. Uh, actually, no, I don't believe so, right? Because it'll it'll do just one to one mapping. Yep. Yep. Uh, and and that's that's it. That's all there is to Redux, right? That is all there is to Redux. Okay. There's nothing else other than. There's uh, <laughs> a bit more. It's a bit more. Uh, the the rest is is how do you. How do you scale this simple idea, right? But in a in, in a uh, you know in, in, for larger applications, right? Where you have lots of data going back and forth, lots of components, uh, and that's that's where the that's where it, it gets a little bit more uh, dicey. And um, there's a lot of best practices on how do how do you organize uh, the uh, your 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 directory structure, how you name your things, right? And that's what we're going to do uh, when we come back. Hi, I'm Jose Anunciato, and you're watching the Web Dev Channel.